Hello Rockstars, I'm Allie, your Rockstar Bar Girl, and welcome back to another informational video in the Basics 101 series. Today we are going to be talking about glassware. Yay! Super fun! Not at all, right? We're just talking about glasses, what they're called, what you use them for. This is definitely not going to be the most exciting video, but it's very important. Um, it's important for two reasons. First of all, you need to know what your glasses are called so that you can communicate with your coworkers. Um, sometimes also educate your customers, but mostly just to communicate with your coworkers. If I need to yell down to a bartender to pass me a champagne flute, um, it's not going to speed up the process if I say, hey, can I get one of those long skinny glasses for a bubbly wine? I need to know what my glasses are called so that I can show my expertise when I work and also communicate with my fellow bartenders, barbacks, waitresses. Um, but I also need to know about my glassware because I need to know which glasses are best for the types of drinks that I'm going to be making for my customers. Um, not only will that come in handy when you start making your own cocktails, but it's really important for you to understand why certain cocktails are made in certain glasses so that you um, can choose the right glasses when you're making your drinks, whether you remembered what a recipe said or not, um, and also just so that you can give the customer exactly what they're looking for. Um, a vodka cranberry versus a vodka on the rocks with a splash of cranberry will go in two completely different glasses and for very important reasons. So we've got to talk about glassware today and learn a little bit about what we use each of these glasses for. All right, so let's get started. Um, there are literally thousands of different styles of glasses that you can use, um, tons of different types that you will find in restaurants and bars all over the place, um, but these 10 or so glasses represent what you should expect to see in a typical high volume bar environment. Um, if they are not exactly like this, then they will be very similar and you'll be able to know um, what those glasses are. So let's get started with our smallest glass. This is a shot glass. A shot glass measures exactly one ounce and it is used for pouring shots of alcohol that are all liquor. When you start mixing juices into your shot recipe, then that goes into a different glass and is called a shooter. But a shot is an all liquor one ounce pour. There can be multiple liquors, but it's all liquor and it's a one ounce pour. The next glass we're going to talk about is a rocks glass. A rocks glass is a four to six ounce glass that is very versatile. It has a lot of uses. A rocks glass is used for shooters. Shooters are taken like shots, meaning they're not on ice. You would throw them back the same way you would a shot but rather than being all alcoholic ingredients, shooters also have juices or other mixers in them which turn them into a sort of like a miniature version of a cocktail. So rather than using a shot glass for a shooter, you will use a rocks glass because once you start adding those mixers to your alcohol and shaking them over ice, you are going to typically get more than one ounce which obviously wouldn't fit into one shot glass, so you need the room that a rocks glass provides. Additionally, you use rocks glasses for neat and rocks pours of cocktails. What do I mean by that? Well, when you pour something neat, you pour it right out of the bottle and straight into the glass. For example, hey bartender, can I get a Jameson neat? I will take my Jameson bottle and pour a six count, one and a half ounces of Jameson directly into this glass. I will not chill it, I will not add ice. That is called serving a liquor neat. And because you get one and a half ounces, a shot glass again would be too small, a rocks glass is per perfect. We also use rocks glasses for on the rocks pours, which is essentially the same thing as a neat pour. It's one and a half ounces, but instead of pouring it directly into the glass, we will first add ice and then pour it over the ice. So a Jameson Neat and Jameson on the rocks are the same amount of Jameson in the glass, but one goes directly into the empty glass while the other will go into a glass with ice. 
Similarly, when someone would like a liquor with just a splash of a non-alcoholic ingredient, for example, Jameson on the rocks with a splash of ginger, I will also use this glass because, again, a shot glass would be too small, but because I'm only adding a splash of my non-alcoholic mixer, a highball glass, which is the next glass we'll talk about, will be too big. So your wax glass is very useful for a number of different types of pours. Next, we have a highball glass. People often get confused. Notice that the highball glass is in fact larger than your rocks glass. A highball glass is a typical cocktail glass. It is the glass that you will use for any cocktail that has one liquor in it, which means you'll be adding about one ounce of alcohol to this glass with ice and then filling it the rest of the way with your mixer. So remember when we talked about the rocks glass and we said that a highball glass would be too large if I wanted Jameson on the rocks with just a splash? Holding the glasses together hopefully allows you to see that this glass is perfect for adding just a splash of my non-alcoholic mixer. But if I wanted to actually have a Jameson and ginger ale where I had considerably more ginger ale in my cocktail, I would need the larger highball glass, which measures about 10 ounces total. The next glass that we have here is a tall glass. And again, holding it next to a highball glass, you can see that this, again, is a larger glass. Our highball glasses were used for one liquor and non-alcoholic mixer cocktails, such as a vodka cranberry, a gin and tonic. But when I add two or more liquors to a cocktail, I'm going to need a little bit more room because the additional alcohol means that I need more space for it. So I want to have about the same amount of non-alcoholic um, mixer in my glass. So a tall glass, which is also sometimes called a Collins glass, can hold anywhere between 12 and 16 ounces, depending on its size. And I would use this glass for drinks such as Long Island, which have five liquors in them. I need that extra room, but I still want to make sure that I have enough room for my non-alcoholic mixers so that the drink doesn't taste too strong. It's important for you to remember that in many bars, the highball glass and the tall or Collins glass are used interchangeably. You might make all of your cocktails, regardless of how many liquors are in them, in a 10 ounce highball glass rather than in a tall glass. or Conversely, you might use tall Collins glasses for all of your cocktails, including your one liquor cocktails. So you just want to check in with your bar to see what they do to make sure that you're following the standard. Next, we're going to talk about pint glasses and beer steins. Pint glasses, again, holding next to our tall Collins glasses, you can see they're the same height, but the pint glass is considerably larger. A pint glass holds 16 ounces of liquid and it is used for a variety of purposes. Most commonly it's used to serve beer in, which is where the beer stein comes in. This is also used to serve beer. You can call it a mug. Typically it's called a stein. The difference is that a beer stein is really going to be used just for beer or beer-based cocktails, whereas your pint glass can also be used for other things. In some restaurants or bars, you might use your pint glass to serve soda or water, um, but you can also use it for large cocktails such as Long Islands um, or Red Devils, um, or you can use it to make doubles of your highball because this is 10 and this is 16, almost double the size. If someone wants a vodka cranberry, you could make it in a highball glass, but if they wanted a double vodka cranberry, then you could make it in a pint glass, double the alcohol and double the cranberry juice. So. These are your two options for pouring beer, but your pint glass also serves other purposes. Next, we're going to move on to the glasses that you don't typically build cocktails in, but are important to know either way because they will be present at your bar. So we'll get started with wine glasses. Even the diviest of dumpiest of bars is going to have one house red and one house white wine option. They might be in a box and be super cheap, but they're going to have it because people drink wine and so it's important to have. 
So you want to know the difference between the two types of wine glasses you might have at your bar. Now, if your bar doesn't offer many wines, then they might not bother with having two types of wine glasses because what's the point? In which case, you are most likely to have a white wine glass. A white wine glass and a red wine glass hold approximately the same amount of liquid. But your white wine glass is taller and narrower, whereas your red wine glass is shorter and wider. They hold about the same amount. When you pour white wine, you will pour it to about three quarters of an inch from the top, whereas red wine, you will pour halfway from the top. And that's, of course, because the shape of the glass is the same, but you want the same amount of wine to be served, regardless of the glass. Next, let's talk about a champagne flute. And see, champagne is simply sparkling wine that comes from the Champagne region of France. So any wine that has bubbles in it is sparkling wine and would be served in a champagne flute, even if it is not technically champagne. A champagne flute um, is too thin to take ice, so be very careful. Do not try to put ice into this glass because you run the risk of chipping the glass and causing um, a danger for you or for the customer. So you can use this glass for sparkling wine and sparkling wine cocktails like mimosas, which all come without ice. And finally, we have our martini glass, sometimes also referred to as a cocktail glass. A martini glass holds about five ounces, depending on the size of your martini glass. And just like our wine glasses and our champagne flute, we would not put ice in this glass to serve a cocktail. However, it is very common to see bartenders adding ice and water to this glass to chill it before straining their cocktail off of ice out of a shaker and into this glass. If you do this, again, be very careful that you do not chip the edges of the glasses while adding ice. And an even safer way to chill your glasses is simply to leave them in the fridge for a considerable period of time and pull them out when you need them. Because you are serving a cocktail that was originally strained on ice into this glass, you definitely want the glass to be really cold because the cocktail needs all the help it can get to stay cold for the entire time that a customer is drinking it. So chilling your martini glass before serving them is very popular. But again, you would not actually serve a cocktail on ice in a martini, a champagne flute, or in your wine glass. So those are the basics on glassware that you need to know about. You might want to go over the video again just to make sure you're familiar with the names, the sizes of the glasses, and what types of drinks will go in them. As always, subscribe, subscribe, click on the button below to make sure that you get updates on when the next video will be out. And tune in to the next Basics 101 video where we will be talking about liquors and liqueurs. And if you've never been behind a bar, don't drink much, don't know about much about alcohol, it's really, really, really going to be an important and exciting video for you to catch. So thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Bye, Rockstars.